today on Glass Reflection. SOMEBODY GETS HORRIBLY KILLED! Psst, my money's on this guy. Okay, so, Soku no Strain, a.k.a. stu a -in, Strategic Armored Infantry. It's a futuristic World War II type setting, with the Allies being played by the Union and the Axis powers being played by the Dig. In huge, over-the-top CGI battles fought with mech known as Strains, hence the title, in space. More specifically, HYPERSPACE! So if you're a big fan of the mega genre and have seen everything from Macross to Gundam 00, you probably won't find anything new here. This is because as the show progresses, it focuses less and less on the strains themselves and more on the characters. And by characters, I mean character, being the protagonist, Sarah Weirik. You might even find this show, a uh, strain to watch. <laughs> <laughs> But if you're less inclined to watch every single mech anime out there just because there's giant robots fighting, then hopefully this will be a lot more enjoyable for you. Because then, you won't be an extreme hardcore Gundam fan who cares less about the actual characters and storyline and more about when the next super awesome mech is going to arrive so that you can totally waste all your money on new Gundam model kit, so then you can spend hours cutting it, sanding it, painting it, and putting it all together only to realize that you can't finish it off because your local hobby store doesn't have the bloody official Gundam black colored marker. What? Okay, to start this off, I'm going to give a quick blow-by-blow -blow of episode 1, so if you actually care about spoilers for episode 1 out of 13, you're quite free to leave. And now that they're gone, let's continue. The episode starts off rather light and fluffy. Young Sarah is giving her fond farewells to her older brother Ralph, who's going off to become an ace strain pilot to fight the Deeg on the other side of the galaxy. And it's very emotional. They dance, she cries, she waves farewell, and that's the end of that scene. Hitting the fast forward here. Welcome to the future. Sarah is now older, taller, and more developed, as many, and I stress, many shower scenes love to remind us, currently in training to become an elite strain pilot to fight the Deeg just like her brother. It's right about here that they actually give a bit more detail about the uniqueness of a strain. In order to pilot one, it's a lot more complex than just sitting in the cockpit playing with the analog stick and hoping for the best. You have to have a mimic. A sort of technological interface created using a part of your own body as a way to communicate with the strain's computer and controls. But the mimic's only real purpose is to add the little plot device where, if lost or stolen, a mimic cannot be replaced. And this fact about how you cannot replace your mimic will totally not become useful before the end of the episode. Ha. They also give a good amount of time to Sarah's teammates so that we can learn more about them and like them more. We have the love interest, the two best friends, and a small conversation about how the love interest said he should get some balls and finally confess his love. Three guesses as to whether he does or not, and the first two don't count. This is even followed by a wonderful little romantic scene where they waltz for a little bit, just like Sarah did with her brother at the beginning of the episode. But of course, said he still can't do it. What a surprise. But not all is good in their happy-go-lucky get-together. The training facility is soon attacked by an unknown enemy strain and little worm mechanical minions known as tumors. And of course, Sarah and the gang cannot stand for this, so they get into their strains and begin the first ever battle of the show. Now here's where the riders come in. The battle starts, they fight, and everybody dies. Okay, let me explain this a bit better. The riders had the guts to spend time on these characters, letting us get to know them, building a little romantic side plot, and then they kill them all in the first battle. Like, how do you do that? <sighs> and it gets better. Not only do they all die, but as expected, Sarah's mimic gets damaged, so she can no longer pilot strains. Who saw that one coming? So Sarah, obviously pissed off, goes inside the laboratory after the enemy pilot to exact her revenge when we discover... Bo -bo -bo -bum! It's her brother! Ooh. 
And of course, since he's her brother, she can't exactly kill him, now can she? So he flies off, leaving Sarah in a depressed, crying mess, and that's the end of episode one. But still, if that's not how you get someone interested in a plot, I really don't know how you would. Because that right there sold me on the show. Like, wow. So after the first episode is done and over with, the show slows down a lot. Sarah, who as previously mentioned cannot pilot a strain anymore, now pilots a Gamby, a smaller, less maneuverable mech that is basically just sent to do all the grunt work. She does this so that she can get closer to her brother's location in a vain attempt to find him, bring him back, and find out why he did what he did. Unfortunately, Gamby pilots rank way down low on the military food chain, so even when Ralph does appear, she can't really do anything about it. But this is only until she finds a universal mimic inside of a doll that for some reason works and lets her pilot a strain again. Well, they needed a way to get her back into a strain somehow, so whatever moves the plot, I guess. And that's the basic story of the show. Find Ralph. To help her out, she gets a new team, complete with a new love interest, all of whom totally do not die. But the thing is that you know that they could. We already know that Strain is not afraid to kill off characters. A very good thing. Start listing off great anime in your head, and it's rare for one of them not to kill an important character somewhere along the line, even if they resurrect them later on. And this leaves the question. Strain. Good anime? Or great anime? You decide. Okay, so now that that's over with, let's get into the gritty little details. Animation! Fairly good, nothing that's gonna blow your socks off, but definitely nothing exceedingly horrible either. The CG effects for the strains, while a hell of a lot better than Final Fantasy Unlimited, got very repetitive after a while, since 80% of the time that you see the strains, they're in hyperspace battles that consist of mechs moving really fast on a backdrop of speeding lines. So that could have used a bit of mixing up. Fortunately, they don't spend as much time on the battles as they could have. Instead, they spend too much time on pointless, etchy, attempted Yuri scenes that do nothing for the plot whatsoever except provide pointless fan service that we totally do not need to see. <sighs> uh, sorry for that. Um, where was I? Characters. Nicely fleshed out, although I'm directing this comment more at the mains and less at the supporting, besides Sarah, the only really good character was another strain pilot in her unit, Lottie, aka The Queen, who has a nice beef against Ralph for killing her own brother. Listen, whoever you are, if anyone kills that traitor, it's gonna be me! So back the hell off! I will kill him! Speaking of Ralph, I do wish they spent more time on his sudden face heel turn to the dark side, which he pulled in less than a minute. However, not beating the current record holder of Anakin Skywalker. Random Star Wars reference. Moving on. Music. A lot of people I've talked to seem to really like the opening and ending for this series, but I'm not particularly fond of them. I guess I'm more of an upbeat opening type guy, and as I'm saying this, I can't even remember how the ending thing goes, so shows how much of an impression that made. Final comments. But in all honesty, I enjoyed watching Strain. It was certainly a lot more enjoyable than a bunch of other mech anime I probably could have watched, and it was rewatchable enough that I enjoyed it uh, the two times that I watched it from beginning to end, being both before and after Funimation licensed it. However, this might have something to do with the fact that it took over a year for them to put it out on DVD after they grabbed the licenses for it. So if you have the money and this interests you in any way, I recommend going out and getting it. Like, what other mech anime are you going to go get? Gundam? Well, Strain has one thing that no Gundam has, a female lead. However, Gundam usually has better music, so I guess it balances it out. Here's what would have been good. Strain with Gundam's music. Hmm.